Earlier on Tuesday, Russian and Ukrainian negotiators, Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlut Kafuslogu, and Turkish President Rajib Tayyip Erdogan arrived at the presidential Domabache office, Istanbul, for the new round of peace talks between Moscow and Kiev as the Russian war on Ukraine has continued for over a month. The talks was closed to the press, according to the Turkish Foreign Ministry. Several rounds of peace talks between Russia and Ukraine have, have been held in Belarus so far, with no concrete results achieved yet. And there is more details in this report. Delegations from Russia and Ukraine are in Istanbul for the first face-to-face -face talks in more than two weeks. Ukraine says its top priority from the talks, which will begin early on Tuesday, is to negotiate a ceasefire. But hopes of progress are slim, with both sides playing down the chances of a breakthrough. On March 10, Turkey made headlines worldwide for hosting the Russian and Ukrainian foreign ministers in the southern city of Antalya, the highest level meeting of the two sides since the war began on February 24. Turkey has now won widespread praise for its efforts to end the war, helped by its unique position in having friendly relations with both Russia and Ukraine. The Russia-Ukraine war has met international outrage with the EU, US and UK, among others, implementing tough financial sanctions on Moscow. Meanwhile, estimates by the United Nations says at least 1,151 civilians have been killed in Ukraine and 1,842 injured. According to the UN Refugee Agency, more than 3.87 million Ukrainians have also fled to several European countries, with millions more displaced inside the country. The seven leading democratic industrialized nations have now also rejected demands by Russian President Vladimir Putin to pay the bills for Russian energy deliveries in rubles. They are prepared for all possible consequences of this decision, as German economics minister Robert Habergrins explains after talks of the G7 energy ministers. Away from the G7, the European Commission is also calling on EU governments to end national programs to sell citizenship to investors, also known as Golden Passport Schemes, and urge them to suspend the sale of visas to Russians and Belarusians. As regards investor residence schemes, member states should immediately withdraw or refuse the withdrawal of a uh, renewal of permits granted to Russians or Belarusian nationals subject to sanctions. Member states should also suspend the issuance of residence permits to all Russian and Belarusian nationals who are subject to EU sanctions in connection to the Ukrainian war. In the meantime, Ukrainian army has liberated Irpin, which is situated on the outskirts of Kyiv. Ukrainian media reports that enemy armored technique was burned and very useful trophies were seized. The day before, Russians tried to shield the front positions of Ukrainian army on the northern outskirts of Irpin. Still in Ukraine, a video from Kharkiv shows the rubble left of a residential building as the Russian invasion continues. Still on the war, in La Estrella, Colombia, a group of children held a pro-Ukraine protest atop the municipality's tallest building in an act of solidarity with the European country amidst the ongoing Russian invasion. The pro-Ukraine protest was led by the mayor of La Estrella, Juan Sebastian. And staying with demonstrations, Ukrainians in Enerhoda are also protesting the Russian invasion at the town's performance venue of the Palace of Culture, calling for an end to the war.